let's get started. Um, so I've really only ever recorded SIL before. But the way I got into SIL is I was playing normal Lang Band for, I guess, maybe a year or two before, maybe not even that long before SIL was released. And then, um, long story short, I sort of ran the Ang Band competitions for a while on the Ook website. So I had to like literally compile and play every variant, you know, kind of whether I liked it or not. And one of the variants that I got really into for a while and, you know, for a while there, there were sort of three Ang Band variants that everybody was playing, everybody in quotes. The first was Ang Band, and that was going through like quite a lot of change. And I mean, let's be real, Ang Band's pretty boring. Like it's, we play it because it's boring. It's, um, you know, you're not playing it to be excited or surprised, which is why people react so viscerally, I think, when it changes. But then um, if you went a little bit on the leaner side of Ang Band, like you wanted something more focused, smaller, tighter, that was SIL. So there, you know, once SIL stopped being updated so often, the um, interest kind of died out a bit. But then on the other side of it, which was kind of like the spinal tap of Ang Band, was Pas Cheng Band. And I won't go into the history here, you can go look it up, but it's basically like every Ang Band variant got smashed together. And the maintainer was super active and made a lot of cool changes based on the community. Uh, then that didn't go so well for a little while, and he went dark for a long time. And there's been a whole bunch of other variants that have popped up that sort of continued the Spinal Tap variant tradition. A bunch of them are being played here right now. Frog Compose Band, Compose Band. But um, recently, the maintainer of Pause Chang Band sort of quietly posted an update to a website somewhere, and it's now on Angband Live. So having said all that, I'm gonna play a bit. I will probably get mad because there are a lot of changes made. Pause Changman is like this staggeringly huge game that frustrates me and entertains me at the same time. Uh, I mostly like it because it has rocket launchers in it. Um, but this game completely changed and I'd, I have a gist of an understanding of what changed, but I also haven't really paid much attention. So I'm not going to go into character creation and tutorial mode here because I could spend like two hours just on that and that's super boring and I just want to play. Um, but what I did before this is I picked a character class race combination that um, I'm just, I don't know, just feel like playing right now. I'll probably get sick of it soon. But I'm going to quick start that race. So I picked... Um, a combat personality, which makes me a tiny bit fightier, for lack of a better term. I picked a race I don't remember being in the game, but maybe it got added in a previous version, or maybe it got added in this one, but it's a water elf. They can walk through water, they resist water, but I re mostly took them because they boosted stats that I was interested in. They didn't have much of an experience penalty, and I like the idea of a water elf mystic, because a mystic is like Basically, Kwai Chang Kane from Kung Fu The Legend Continues. Or basically like every old man martial artist you've ever seen in any Kung Fu movie. And a water elf like flows like water, and so does a mystic, right? So thematically it works. And I can write fan fiction about this. So we're going to try this character. Uh, so let's give it a shot. I'm sort of tempted. Uh, so just kind of a high level, I think... So mystics are martial artists, they don't use, they can use weapons, but the idea is you don't use much equipment, and your fighting should be pretty good. The base martial artist class is a monk, which has spell books, and they kind of act like a mage fighter. The mystic um, just has like special abilities that are hard-coded, so I probably won't play enough to get any of them, but I think later on they can like summon animals, or they do stuff, I don't remember what they do. But their main stats are Dexterity, which helps their fighting, and Charisma, which helps their casting, I think. I think that's right. If you know better than me, speak up in the chat, or whatever, but that's about as much as I know. So this has changed a lot. You used to start in a town, um, and you could just kind of go free world explore. Now it sounds like they've 
there's sort of like a, a, a gross worldly, world progression. So like I'm in the first world and I'm supposed to go fight Smaug, the Lonely Mountain. But the first thing I need to do is what I do in any Angband variant, which is I go buy a lamp. And if I don't find a lamp, I am going to kill myself and start again because I want a lamp. Luckily, I do not have to do that though. So let's buy one of these. And let's buy some oil. I'm going to get rid of these torches. And the reason why I want to start with the lamp is because radius one light is bad enough and irritating enough in Sill. It is super annoying in normal Angband variants. Um, I'm not going to buy any equipment because I'll just find it in the dungeon. I will try to find. Okay, so uh, I'll explain this later, but this is pretty cool. <coughs> uh, I will try to buy some thing that will help me survive. So are there phase door scrolls? No, but there's teleport scrolls. So let's buy some of those because they give us some escapes. For some reason, I have a lot of money to start. I don't know how that happened. Oops. Can I, how much are they? I'm sitting very far away from the screen, so it's hard to tell what rows line up, but I think that says 59. 60 times, I can buy a lot. Cool. And I hate the ID game, so, well, no, forget it. I don't really need the rest. So I played for about five minutes. Why do I have so many spell points? What am I even going to use these? <laughs> so when I start out, I can't cast anything. All I have is this ability called Concentrate. Um, and it charges up my spell points. Oh, wow, you can overcharge. I did not realize that. But I guess if you overcharge, it decays. OK. Um, so the mistake I made when I first played for five minutes is it looks like you should go right here, right? Like there's a path. It looks inviting. Uh, no, that kills you. So there's a dungeon nearby, just southwest of us, that we're supposed to go to first, I guess, to level up. And you'll see, if you haven't played a straight Angband variant before, this is notorious-ish. Um, in normal Angband, this is slightly different. But in the variants that descend from Z Angband, this is more familiar. Maybe one day I'll just like give a rambling talk on other Angband variants, but you know, we'll see. Maybe that'll be my go viral moment. Um, but yeah, different stores have different symbols and colors and stuff. Our home is where we can drop off um, our stuff. There used to be a museum, which was on zero, where you could drop things to just permanently remember that they exist. Uh, so yeah, we're on kind of like the overworld map right now. Um, this was a big change in this version. Somebody was just killed by the teenage off-screen ninja Drolum. What variant is that? Does somebody want to tell me that? Um, uh, but anyhow, in the wilderness, usually if you tried to walk through water, you would drown or be hurt unless you were levitating. But I'm a water elf, so apparently I just swim. No problem. So I'm going to hope to not meet any monsters on the way to this dungeon, because as you can see, the wilderness has sort of a power scale. And level 14 is quite a bit bigger than level 1. Levels in Angban variants um, tend to max out at 50. And I believe that's still the case in Pacheng Band. So we're going to go in here. So now that we're in a dungeon, there's a bunch of different dungeons in the game. And you may have recalled, uh, that was a fun, accidental pun. You may recall that uh, a few minutes ago, I walked over that thing called a wizard tile. So in Paz Changban, when you read a scroll of recall in a dungeon, it takes you out of the dungeon to the town, or out of the dungeon at least. But once you're in town, if you don't want to go walk all the way back down the dungeon, which is really irritating, you can recall down to the dungeon level that you started at or you left. So I believe that wizard tile is basically a free recall back into the dungeon. In old Paz Chang Band, you either had to buy a scroll or you had to pay somebody to recall you down, and it was not cheap. 
for beginning character. I believe now that's just free. But I don't know. I'm making a lot of guesses because this game has changed super a lot since I last played it. So in... Oh no. I forget all my keys. Okay. Uh, the control set in these big variants is quite a lot bigger than Sill. So, and I used to have a file that had all my key maps, but A, I deleted it, and B, I don't know how I would get it on Tang Band Live anyways. So I'm just going to play with vanilla controls for a while and hope I don't get really angry. Uh, so I'm tired and it's late, so I'm going to be grumpy still streamer. One of the reasons I just stopped playing Angband variants is this shit. Okay. I don't want to guess what monsters can do. That's really annoying. This game is massive. So normally what I'll do is I'll just read the spoilers um, by looking at the source. But I'm too lazy, so I'll just play along. I don't think this thing can kill me. The reason why I hate this in this game is that uh, unless it's changed, one of the things that made Pazhu Changben exciting to people is that um, in some sense there's always an element of risk that's a lot out of your control. Uh, not a lot. You have to make a lot of bets because in Sil, as an example, the model for the combat roles and um, some of the decisions you have to make is, it's definitely probabilistic in nature and it's really, um, it feels like there's wide variance sometimes when you are equally matched in power to what you're trying to do. So if you are fighting a monster, this is like, a gross abstraction, but if you're fighting a monster that's close to your power, the results are highly variable. If you're fighting a monster that's well beyond, uh, you're well beyond its power, the results are very predictable, you're going to steamroll it. And the other way around is also true. Um, in Paz Changban, there's a lot of randomness in everything, or like a margin of randomness in everything. So, you know, in situations where you would hope the game would say like, maybe you're going to miss a fixed number of turns, it'll be a random number of turns. or a thing that you're used to having um, zero fail rate in a different variant will have a fail rate in this game. So um, it was kind of exciting to play because it's there's a second element of Pazhang Ben's design that, um, if you're a masochist, lines up neatly with that risk element, which is that it's super long. So a single character, unless you really know what you're doing, can take like dozens of hours to finish. I think the best players tend to finish, you know, absolute fastest. You know, I think the absolute fastest I've seen on like super speed characters is like eight to 10 hours. But realistically, you're looking at 20 hours if you're really good. So just think about 20 hours where you, if you make even no mistakes, you can just die to bad luck. Um, that's the kind of person you have to be to want to play this. So right now I'm just walking around whacking things and looking for equipment. Um, I believe the way martial arts characters work is that in the beginning equipment does sort of help, but as you get stronger, uh, there's more and more advantages. You get more armor class and you do more damage if you go naked basically. But the thing with Paz Cheng Band is there are like a million things that you need to resist to survive. Look at all these things. Acid, electricity, fire, cold, poison, light, dark, confusion, nether, nexus, sound. Each of these um, has sort of two implications. One is that if a monster hits you with a big attack of this element, you will just die. The second is a lot of them have nasty effects. Cold busts your potions, fire I think burns your devices. Electricity pops your jewelry, if I remember correctly but only if it's in your pack. I don't remember. I think electricity might pop your devices too. Acid corrodes your equipment that's not resistant to it. I think it might destroy inventory stuff too. Light blinds you. Dark blinds you. <laughs> Confusion confuses you, which is super bad. Um, Nether, I think, level drains you. Nexus teleports you, but in the shittier variants, which I expect this is one, it also scrambles your stats, which means that I stopped playing the game for months. Um, sound stuns you, I think. Shards 
uh, cuts you. Chaos does terrible, terrible, terrible things to you when you don't want to get hit by it if you don't resist it. Disenchantment permanently ruins your equipment, even if it's like super special equipment. Time also really messes you up. And then there's all kinds of other stuff. Um, so in general, you know, the good thing that I remember about Paz Chang Band is that it started to be balanced so that it was rare that you would get one shot killed if your resistances were poor. But the effects were still super nasty. And the nastier the effects were, sort of the less damage things were likely to do to you. That's not a hard and fast rule, but it was pretty close. But the reason why I'm saying all this is that one of the things that a martial artsy character has to kind of balance, and this happens a lot with different character classes in Paz Chang, is that um, you want to do a lot of damage to end fights quickly, and um, you want to keep your armor class high by ironically not wearing armor. But by doing that, you forego a lot of the resistances and benefits that equipment gives you in this game, and you like can't do that. So you got to kind of trade it off. A lot of characters have that. Um, many characters in this game or uh, races have limited equipment slots or weird equipment slots, and you have to just kind of make do with what you get. You know, the hilarious thing about this particular video is that I'm probably going to like download a whole bunch of probably erroneous information about this version of the game based on what I know from years ago playing the old one. And I'm probably going to die to like a level two monster, you know, it's like uh, the ivory tower version of a roguelike player. Those that can't kill Morgoth teach kind of thing. But I just kind of want to find some stairs because I don't care how dangerous this game is, it's pretty boring to fight on level 1. Um, I will say that even on martial arts characters that I've been playing before that were doing very well, I usually quit out of boredom before I won because it's super depressing, not depressing, it's just super boring to find so much equipment in the dungeon and not be able to wear it. And a lot of the character classes or um, races in Paz Chang Band that have weird equipment restrictions, they tend to have something else extremely entertaining to balance it out. Uh, but this is not one of those classes, I don't think. Okay, I'm not finding a downstairs, so... Um, a similarity this game does share with Syl. Oh, ha, I lied. I was going to say is that if you go up a level and go down it, the level doesn't persist. But I guess either that changed or I remembered incorrectly. So now I have to figure out where the F this downstairs is. And I have no detection. Do I have any detection? Hey, what's this lamp do? I guess we don't know yet. So realistically, there's a secret door somewhere that I don't know where it is, and the stairs are in it. Oh, or it's here. Or not. Level two. No spells yet. What was that? Yeah, so that's another characteristic of I think even normal Langband does this now. Is that if you have some equipment on and you don't know what it is just by um, keeping it on, certain character classes at varying speeds will start to figure out what it does. I believe average means it's just a lamp, but okay, let's see if this robe does anything for us. No, so I don't know if you saw that what just happened, but 
Um, I had six armor class, and I put on a robe and it went down to five, which means worse. This isn't like second edition Dungeons and Dragons. So on any normal character class, if you put on armor that has no benefits, it does nothing. On a monk or a mystic or a martial arts character, it actually it hurts me. If I put it on, it hurts my stats, it hurts my armor class. So this is trash and we're going to treat it like trash. So one of the things that, you know, really got me interested in or having fun with Pas Cheng Bend is that <coughs> um, it descends from a line of variants that just added like hilarious cred to the game, like absolutely ridiculous stuff. So there was an Angband variant called Z Angband that took first a lot of the characters and um, yeah, mostly the characters from Roger Zelazny's Amber series, which is like one of my favorite fantasy series of all time, and put it in addition to all the Angband stuff that was going on and all the Tolkien stuff that was going on. It just added it. It didn't really like create a different variant that was not Tolkien and was only Zelazny. They just dumped a bunch of stuff in and made the game a lot more ridiculous in terms of difficulty and length and all the stuff and content. And then that variant was picked up well, and a bunch of other stuff went in there too, like characters from like Doom and mostly Doom. And I don't know what the timeline we're talking about here is, but I'd say like probably late 90s, early 2000s if I had to guess. I vaguely remember these things being difficult. So, so somewhere along the line, um, somebody, at least one person in Japan, decided that Angband variants were like cool. So they took Zangband and they forked it. And that was called Hangband, and it's still maintained to this day. Uh, and they added a ton of anime stuff. And like ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. Like all these personalities and ridiculous character classes. And this was alongside all the Tolkien stuff and alongside all the Zelazny stuff. And Hangband's theme seemed, like there was a ton of Final Fantasy stuff it added. Hangband's theme seemed to be, let's just add stuff. And or make the game more ridiculous. And then at a certain point, that got picked up, reforked back into English-speaking land. And I don't remember how that all worked out, but eventually it became Chengband, which is a variant that was started by the guy who also builds Paz Chengband. And it became Paz Chengband when he pulled in changes, or at least just the idea of a possessor class into Chengband that um, the whole gameplay shtick, and it's still in the game, is that you're kind of a very weakling spirit, but you can possess other monsters. And that was a substantive enough change that it became known as Paz Chengband, or it was renamed as Paz Chengband. And then that variant underwent like very, very rapid development for a pretty long time, like for a few years, I think. Like I remember the game going from Paz Chengband one point something. to like six point something very quickly. I can't tell if these armor things that I'm finding don't have pluses or if I just don't know that they have pluses. Like does a pair of soft leather boots mean it does nothing or does it mean that I don't know what it does? The subject is uncone. Did that hurt my AC? I mean, one AC doesn't really matter, but no, it helped. So I just don't know. So th if I had to say, you saw me get mad about having to identify monsters, only slightly less irritating for me is identifying equipment. Like I hate, hate this. And, um, but it's pretty normal in roguelikes and I can't really like bemoan the design. I just personally don't like it. Uh, but a thing that this line of variance had for a while, and I think maybe still has, is that there's like levels of identify. 
So a normal identify scroll or a normal identify process that is like relatively inexpensive only teaches you a bit about like basic items. If you get an artifact or something really important and you want to know everything about it, there's a much more expensive version of identify you need to use. It's usually called like star identify star. And that I find stupid enough that I usually patch it out of the game if I have the source, but can't do it because it's on a web server now. And I don't have root to that. So I just have to play as the game was intended. All right, so we're on experience level four and I didn't even notice. I don't care, just die. I don't know how deep this dungeon is anymore. Does it even tell me? But the gist of these dungeons in Paz Chang is that usually the way it works is that you explore the dungeon. Oh, I have a move now, Flaming Strike. You get to the bottom, whatever the bottom is. Stronghold, I think, used to be 15 floors. I don't know what it is now. And almost every time at the bottom of the dungeon, there's a special unique who's the master of the dungeon. And if you kill it, you win the dungeon. And they tend to drop like a lot of stuff. Some of them have fixed drops that you know are useful. So as an example, Smaug used to drop um, uh, a rare spell book that was useful to you, for lack of a better term. Um, so you kind of know, like if you're trying to build out your character, you know what dungeons you should go finish because there's certain things you know you will get if you do that. But I believe that's probably now changed. Let's try this flaming strike. this? Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Whoa! This is so cool! It's like a little sanctuary room where you can recall back. Except it has traps in it. <laughs> There's no peace. Um, this is really cool! I like that. Actually, no, I want to see how this works. So there's two things. I expect that if I now I'm starting to remember. I think Pasteng Bed does not have persistent levels. What it has is like semi-persistent levels. So if I, it remembers where I've been in the dungeon. But if I leave the dungeon, it's like you're coming back for the first time, or it resets the dungeon when you come back. I think that's how it works. <coughs> so I'm gonna try this just to see how this works. Because before you used to have to do this with scrolls. Okay, that's not where I was hoping it would send me. That's can't you send me to the town, please? So I think what's whoa. I think what's gonna happen now is that if I go back to town. Oh no, I'm not gonna get a chance because I'm just gonna die. Okay, I don't want to deal with this right now, so I'm gonna teleport. Except I ended up somewhere I don't want to be. That's fine. Wow, this panther really has me. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Oh, it's a raven. Oh, I'm dead. Okay, well, what'll be good is if I die here, I've told you a lot about Post Chang Band, and I can feel good about myself and call it here. Um, but what I'm going to try to do first is win. So let's see if I can kill this thing with Flaming Strike. Nope, I'm dead. So that's the game. This is the spirit of Pashang Ben. Uh, trying to figure out how much I care about this variant. So here's what I've been thinking. Um, I have a couple ideas for 
what else might be fun to do. I'm, you know, I'm just kind of doing this for fun. I don't know how many of you watch this and get a kick out of it, but it's fun to come back to these. So two ideas I have for sort of next things we can do is I would maybe like to do just a video where I kind of talk about the recent history of Angband variants. I don't know. And then we can get somebody who knows what they're talking about to fact check it. Because <laughs> I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. Uh, and you know, it doesn't even really need to be a recent history. Yeah, sure, who cares? Um, what it could be is some things never change. What it could be is sort of like a um, a trip down memory lane. So I could kind of go over the variants here and kind of describe how old they are, where they kind of fall in terms of the generation they come from, and like what some of their quirks or highlights are. No, no pun intended with still quirk. And you know, if you go to um, I think it's this. If you go here and you click this, this is like the oldest school sort of Angband community on the web right now. And it's got a function where if you've played an Angband variant, you dump your character after you die or during playing. Um, you can upload it here and it kind of orders your character. So you can already see, like, let me, you can already see which you know, some of the more long-standing or popular variants are Angband was a big one. Tome, which is, I mean, so I guess what I'm saying is I'm not going to do it now. I could kind of go over all these variants and say, you know, let's go over some at a time, either ordered by like age or like literally going A to Z might be fun for me. Um, and who knows, like, I don't, I don't know the few people that watch the channel. I don't know how many of you know Angband or how many of you are watching because you like Sill. Because Sill kind of was an olive branch to the rest of the roguelike community to say, hey, I know all these things are fucking crazy and you probably don't want to play them because they're kind of dumb. But, and by dumb, I don't mean like, they're, they're purposely a bit like, they don't take themselves very seriously, you know? Um, whereas Sill like kind of took itself seriously. It, it took folks who are like, yes, roguelikes, serious business. We should be game designers, blah, blah, blah. And um, kind of bridge the gap or built a bridge between this kind of wacky Angband community and like people who might like like Crawl or Brogue or I don't know what's cool now, nor do I really care. Um, so you may have come from there and maybe you don't really know a lot about what all this junk is, but I would guess that most people that play rando Angband variants I'm going to make a diff like sort of a feeling statement rather than a fact statement. I probably know more about these than most people. <laughs> Just because I had to figure out some shit about every single one of them to think about whether we were going to run a competition or not. Um, so I could do a few videos about that. Like, here's what I know about each weird-ass Angband variant. And then the other thing I'd like to do is that right now, there is quite a lot of development happening on main, like, vanilla Angband. And we're actually, we, Guarl, the guy who, uh, person who runs angband.live that I was just playing on, as if he didn't have enough to do in maintaining that, he runs the competitions because I got bored of doing it and I asked him to do it because he was clearly a more productive and intelligent person than me. And right now what he's doing is he's, um, we're kind of smoke testing the angband 4.2 release because there's been a lot of changes made. Um, I think for the better, but what do I know? And we're kind of going through every character class and testing that class by running a short competition on it. So this competition only has 11 hours left. I'm certainly not playing this one, but the next time we get to like a fighty character, one that punches things instead of zapping things, uh, I wouldn't mind trying to play the comp character, even if we don't finish in time for the comp and we can make a couple videos about that. Um, I'm highly unlikely to finish an Eggman game because it is so long. I don't think Vanilla Angband tracks your play time in hours. Posh Angband does, which is great. Uh, no, it doesn't. But 
it takes a long time more time than i'm willing to play usually sill is already too long for me like for a short game it takes i don't know it takes me at least five to ten hours to finish the game probably closer to ten and you know that's a lot of hours for a single character but anywho uh so if you've heard either of these ideas and you're like yeah i am a single human that i would listen to that that's good enough for me like i'm mostly just doing this for myself so if you think either of those ideas is interesting let me know uh if you think a different idea that you've had by hearing this or otherwise is interesting let me know and i'm, I'm happy to give it a shot but uh the odds of me playing Sill for a long time are low. Like, I am probably going to lose interest soon. Um, so, looking for some other things to try to reconnect with. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching me play, basically... What I just did there, where I ran into the dungeon, died quickly, and gave up. To get a pause chain character off the ground, generally I would do that a lot until one picks up some steam. Certain characters are a lot easier to get off the ground, but that one was not a difficult one to get off the ground, and, um, you know, I don't know why that dungeon is in a place where you need to fight monsters way over your level to get there that just randomly kill you, but you don't play these games because they're fair. Um, yeah, Old Paws Chang, that dungeon was much, much closer to the town, and it did not take you into super dangerous territory to get into it, so I don't know. You know, like I said, these games are made for free, they're not meant to be fair, so if there's stupid shit in them, the reason why you're encountering the stupid shit is because you decided to play the game, not because <laughs> not because the game is stupid, you know, it's by design. So, anywho, that's my theory of Angband Roguelikes. Uh, this was a bit different, but I hope it was somewhat entertaining, it sure was for me. I got to sit on my couch and expand for a while. I'll see you next time.